3D technology has proven to be a great tool to create imaginary worlds, but also recreate the past. Video game graphics have become very complex and realistic, while 3D graphics in films can be stunning, if of course, used properly. Sciences like archaeology have started to use various 3D technologies nowadays to help document the findings and visualize the past. But what happens when we try to recreate a monument or an ancient site which does not exist anymore, or stands in ruins? How should we judge a reconstruction regarding the aesthetics and the accuracy? The city of Athens is a good example to study, since it has been featured in many digital reconstructions the late years, with the more recent one being in Assassin's Creed, Odyssey. Back in 2013, the visual effects company Wiskidri released online a stunning demo video with a 3D reconstruction of ancient Athens, which met enthusiastic reactions. In Greece, almost every news media website shared the video with headlines such as, this is how ancient Athens looked like. The video reached the social media, where the comments show that almost everyone who watched the video perceived it as a remarkably accurate reconstruction of the ancient city. But the enthusiasm surrounding this viral video did not allow even the journalists presenting it to really watch it and perceive it the way it was meant to be. A show reel of a visual effects company promoting their great work capabilities to potential customers. This means that they don't necessarily need to really mind about historical or archaeological accuracy. Why? because historical accuracy was simply not their goal, although the 3D city in the video has the very basic elements to identify it as Athens. These elements, being basically, a rocky hill with a big ancient temple on top and a city wall around the houses, can be actually enough to identify ancient Athens in a reconstruction. But apart from these three, nothing else on this video is based on actual Athens or any historical research. It is pure fiction. So, since these three basic elements are present, is this image enough to be granted a this is how ancient Athens really looked headline? Of course not, for many reasons, but the main one being that what we see here is not at all realistic. Which brings us to an important conclusion, which is actually not easy to discern. Realism does not automatically mean accuracy. The video game Assassin's Creed Odyssey has created a marvelous depiction of many ancient Greek cities, including Athens. This time the city is fully interactive as the player can walk around and explore it. Once again, hundreds of reviews sprung online by players or simply by people who watched the trailers, praising the so-thought accuracy in which the city was recreated. Indeed, the reconstruction has a lot more accuracies concerning the layout of the city, the general form of the monuments and the various buildings. The realism of textures, including wear and dirt is exceptional. But again, is this how ancient Athens really looked like? The game is set in 431 BC, under the rule of Pericles. While historically Pericles was indeed the ruler at this time, many of the buildings depicted were built years after his death, including the Areteion and the Temple of Athena Nike. In all, the city presented in the game is a shrunk version of the actual ancient city. The creators tried to retain the proportions and the general layout but in a smaller scale, which would facilitate the player to walk around it and also make the scenery more interesting. While certainly based on historical accuracy, this reconstruction shouldn't be seen as such. Take for example the Temple of Hephaestus. While the general shape, the number of columns, the Doric style and some other elements resemble the real building, it is far from an accurate actual reconstruction. But is it really worth it to seek this sort of accuracy in this game? As the creators themselves say, you can't get the exact uh, feeling of what it was, but you you get the you feel like you're in you're in Athens of that period, and I think that's what's super special about what we've done. So once again, we should be first of all looking at the goal of a reconstruction. In this case, it is to create a world based on a real one, but we created in the needs and aesthetics of a video game. Probably the game would be far more boring and visually flat if it sought absolute accuracy. The game artists made an amazing effort and created a stunning world on the verge of reality and mythology. On the other hand, archaeological reconstructions seek accuracy in a very different level. The uncertainty on ruined monuments is always high and archaeologists are reluctant to add anything that is imaginary or unknown. In a way that a truly accurate historical reconstruction of a whole city would be impossible. 
The realism of the 3D renderings can often be misleading since the viewer is usually overwhelmed by it, either accepting it as truthful, or the other way around, specialists to reject the reconstruction, since this type of realism doesn't usually go along with hypothetical additions. In a nutshell, a few key points that we need to take into consideration while watching a reconstruction is first, to understand the goal of the creators and judge it accordingly. Is it a game? Is it for a museum? Is it addressed to specialists, mainstream audience or kids? Secondly, a reconstruction means that the actual building or place presented does not exist, at least in the form we depict it. A reconstruction, apart from any scientific research, will always be subject to artistic license. And finally, as we previously saw, we should not forget that realism does not always come with accuracy. Thank you for watching. For more videos on 3D and archaeological reconstructions, don't forget to subscribe.